Good afternoon. There we go. Well, I want to start out this, this well, it's actually this afternoon, but last year we had the sledgehammer, and I loved it as a prop. And let me hear if you were incredibly excited that the Kmart building is also, for some of you, the Venture Building, the Kmart slash Venture Building is down. Let's hear it. And that's what the sledgehammer is about. In order to redevelop independence, in order to build independence, sometimes we need to tear some things down in order to build some things. And so that I love talking about that, and I love talking about independence. Let's also talk about, uh, on the first slide here as we go to that, let's talk about a, a number of great things that are happening in independence and what is moving forward. I also want to thank, though, I want to thank Zach Walker for all the hard work because none, none of this is possible without you, so very good. <laughs> Appreciate that. And also for the city staff. You work so hard to make so many great things work, so I just want to say thank you to them. Yes, 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 yes. And also I want to thank the chamber for allowing me to be here and allowing us to be here to talk about our vision for independence going forward. So... We've got many, many wonderful attractions in independence, and I love talking about this. Uh, over the weekend, I was at the Bingham Wagner feeding uh, biscuits and gravy to folks at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and uh, with Madeline, she makes great biscuits and gravy, and she works so hard as a volunteer for our city. And so I just want to—that that is a fun event. But also, we've got many, many great attractions. We've got the Vale Mansion. The Chamber of Commerce puts on Santa Caligon, which is terrific. We've got the Truman Library and Truman Home, which is absolutely fantastic. And now with the renovation, it is a great place for people to come and visit Independence. And also the National Frontier Trails Museum is so important to our community. And then we talk about the sledgehammer again. And it's just so important for us, if we're going to build this city, is to have the courage to use that, to tear things down, to get rid of things that are not important to our city, that actually are dragging us down. It is so important for us to have I-70 and Nolan Road, exit 12, to be a destination going forward. That really is. Uh, I was so glad the folks from Wally said, independence was the original great American road trip. Imagine using a wagon and getting mules and going across the, the United States in a destination in a place you've never seen, but with hopes and dreams and aspirations of getting there. And that was what independence is. It is the launching place. It launches dreams. And so the sledgehammer was an opportunity to do that. But also with this council, we want to build going forward. And so I want to take and, and move to another image and that is, and if I can reach it here and not fall off the stage. Now let's start building. Let's clear, we've cleared some things out. Let's start building. So if we could get the city council, because I wanted to get us, uh, get a photo up here of all of us up here. And if you would kind of, kindly come up with your hammers. Let's give a round of applause to these council members, because they are willing, yes. They are willing to work very hard at dealing with all kinds of issues. But it's so important when you meet them and see them to say thank you for the hard work that you do because they work incredibly hard to make sure that we can move this city forward. So thank you all for that. Thank you. So now to kind of recap last year, uh, we've got the square streetscape is still moving forward. We've got to thank council member or excuse me, Congressman Cleaver, I've all been so used to saying council member, Congressman Cleaver for the amazing work that he does and the tremendous amount of money he has raised for that project. Also, this year, Congressman Cleaver has in the budget and Council Member Perkins, I know you're very excited about this, the Kentucky Avenue Bridge, uh, what was it, three million, is that right? Three million for, and you've been working on that every year that you've been here Every year we talk about the budget, you talk about Kentucky Avenue Bridge, and so I'm so excited that Councilmember Cleaver is going to bring money to make that happen. That is truly, truly outstanding. One of the other things that we have to do as a recap from last year is IPL. We will see this fall the study that comes back from that. But one of the things that I have learned this year from the surveys that we've done with citizens 
is they are, and you are very excited, very excited to own your own utility. And that is really powerful. Go ahead, yes. You're very proud of owning your own utility IPL. And so this fall, we'll decide really a generational decision on how do we move forward with IPL in a way that is a great a value for you as a citizen, but also cost effective and delivering good service because their uptimes are so much better than some of the competitors in the area. Also, to recap from last year, Hub Drive and 291, what an, an incredible, or Hub Drive on 291 and 23rd Street, that development is going on there. How many people live over there, live close to there? And you see them making the work on that, right? They're making progress. Also, the ARCH program, and I have to thank Councilmember, Councilman Member uh, McCandless for that. She's worked very, very hard on that process and that project, and also the Independence Together program. You did a great job with that and brought it there. Um, how, many, how many pounds of trash have we picked up? 400,000 pounds of trash. And Mike from hy actually stood up for that, so you were glad to see that done, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> So now, moving on, talking about demolition, and we've got images here of the old Kmart building where it was, but we've also got a now another picture of the Kmart building parking lot, which is empty, and that's what it is right now. And we hope soon, this fall, that we will see progress on that project and start building Wally's to serve our area. The great thing about that is, it is going to make exit 12 a destination. When have we been able to say that we could say exit 12 is a destination? That people will skip cities in between because they want to come see a Wally's. How many of you have seen Bucky's? Raise your hand if you've seen a Bucky's. Okay, a few of you have. Have you driven miles and passed other convenience stores to go to a Bucky's? Absolutely. Did you spend hundreds of dollars once you got there? Exactly right. And that's what we're really excited about is the revenue from the tax revenue that we can get from that location. So Wally's folks, we're delighted to have you here, but really, we're looking forward to your money. All right. There were some people that were really excited about the money part. They were really excited about the money part. All right. But that is so, so important uh, to do that. But on the next one, we have a clock. And it's on that. It is time to renew, refresh, and move forward. And so the next one, we have a renew. A renew. We want to renew, refresh, redevelop, restart, rebuild, release, and revise our city. And that's what this city council is doing. They are working very hard to make that happen for you. And so we continue to chip away at these items. And, uh, and one of the things that we did... Uh, for this council, and now we've got, I know they've got uh, opportunities for some big fish with this one, but that continues to be a great project and will grow for the next 20 to 30 years. One of the largest developments of independence ever by a big stretch. And so with that, we've got on the next slide, uh, that is also the North Point, and that just gives you a sense of perspective. You've got a truck there in the foreground, Way, way back, you've got a forklift, and it looks minuscule, doesn't it? That's 60,000 feet of space that is now going to be used with the North Point development, and we are so excited that they are here and continue to talk about that. Yes. And this is, I love Michelangelo's David, and one of the great trips of my lifetime was to be able to go to Europe and actually stand and see David carved and to see the incredible masterpiece that Michelangelo built. But when he, talked about, when he talked about David, he said he had to chip away until he revealed the statue. And that's what we need to continue to do, is continue to chip away to reveal the magnificent opportunities and potential of independence. And that's what we need to continue to do. And so as we move forward, this gives us a glimpse of the North Point projects, and you know that down here, we're really just working right now on this part, but it will develop almost all the way up to the old power plant. 
And that will be truly remarkable when that is completed. And that will bring us to the next slide, please. Ah, very good. And I, please forgive me, but this is my granddaughter. I've got a couple of grandpas over here. Uh, but this is the very first fish she ever caught. It's a, and the guy said, and, and, and Jordan, who's doing the slides, he said, that's a big bluegill. No, it's not. She was afraid to hold it, so she's holding it out in front of her so it looks really big as far as visuals. The challenge was the picture was Papa having to go up and kind of continue to get the fish to stay straight. But we've been fishing for small fish, but now what I've heard from you and from folks who are developers in the area that now one of the things that we can do as a chamber of commerce and as a city is really build the North Point project going forward and now really have the opportunity to go after big fish. And that gives us the big changes. And right here, we've got my granddaughter's uh, catch does not look like anything of these catches. It took four men to hold a sturgeon from Lake Michigan or the lar one of the largest catfish caught in the Missouri River. Now the opportunity is, and I know Zach Walker, a city manager, and the staff are working on big fish. And the reason this big fish is there, he gave me this idea. So if he didn't like it, blame him. If you like it, give him the credit, okay? So, uh, but it was his idea. And, I, and that's really the key to this, is we have the opportunity to go forward and really, really, really develop and build the city going forward. And that is so important for our progress. <clears throat> and then that should bring us back to the big fish and just imagine what we can do as these large companies go forward. We can't say out loud uh, some of the companies that are looking, but they are truly S&P 500 top 10 kind of companies. And that will be remarkable for the City of Independence to have that opportunity for growth going forward. That'll bring us to this. So as this council continues to work, they're working on making big changes, but in incremental ways. The way that you make a big change is you go incremental steps, as you can see in the slide in the upper left-hand corner. And if you just take one step at a time, it's remarkable how high you can climb if you continue just to climb. And that's what this council is doing. They continue to work to do that. I like this picture because this picture... Uh, kind of reminds me of the wild woody days. Anybody remember the wild woody days? Ah, very good. Yes, not as much applause for wild woody days. Anyway, I loved it because when I came to wild woodies with my parents, and which is now the price chopper at I-70 and Nolan Road, I just knew this place somehow would be important in my life. I had no idea when I was a kid that was like seven or eight years old that this would be an impact. But it truly is powerful what kind of what you think of or dream of as, as a child to be here today is so, so important. But I want to ask this. Uh, we've got, well, let me go to the next slide here. This is what I want to talk about for a second. And this is very important for us. This is the images of Cargo Largo. And the reason this is important is because it allows us, it allows us to really see how the city can also develop. That brought 400 jobs to independence, which was powerful. But the thing that I was most concerned of, I was most concerned about the traffic. But I just want to ask you now, what's the traffic like on Nolan Road from your perspective? It's fine. This is what I heard. No problem. No big concerns. I mean, there are times that you have to stop at the 39th Street stoplight for some time or down there next to Quick Trip. You've got to stop and wait a while, get queued up. But it is, not, it is not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. And I think that's important for us to kind of revisit that. What impact did it have on our city? So then we go to the next slide, please. And that is, again, a picture of Nolan Road in the 1960s. But that is so, so important to have that look at, at those things together. Excuse me. And then we go to the next slide, please. Uh, and that is right there. That's what Wally's will look like. I know that's probably not the most flattering picture for me to show, but that's the one that we show. It looks like a bunch of solar panels on top. Have you thought about putting solar panels up there? You have. So, uh, but that's what Wally's looks like. How many uh, gas pumps will you have? 80. So 
you're in a, in a quick trip, and I know you hate to talk about a competitor, but they probably have about 20, right? It probably clearly close. So it's, it'll almost be the size of four quick trips in that corner is roughly what you're talking about. Okay? But you'll have a lot more traffic because you'll be, you, you told me earlier about 70% of folks that are not from the city will stop and turn in there because they do see it as a destination. And I think that's incredibly important for us, the traffic that we can bring. And then also we wanna work with you in order to, well, let me do, put it this way. Sometimes asking someone to prom publicly is the best way to do it because it's hard for them to turn it down, right? So this is kind of a, like a prom invitation for the folks at Wally's with all of us here. But you know, can we have a little section in there that we can promote the amazing attractions of independence? Yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and that's what we're looking for, is that kind of a partnership so we can really uh, thrive together. And that is excellent. And so, and I didn't ask you about that earlier, did I? So I really, it really was a prom invitation there. But, uh, and I knew the answer would be yes. So we, as an attorney, Hobart always told me, don't ask a question if you don't know the answer. So Hobart, I made you proud right there. Okay, and then on the next slide, another th project that has worked very, very well and over 400,000 pounds of trash is the Independence Together program. And if we can go on the next slide, this just shows folks working and the amount of trash they've picked up. As, excuse me, Councilmember McCandless said, 400,000 pounds of trash. And that is remarkable. So. And next, Michelle Stumstead with IPD is going to come forward and talk about Prop PD. So. Let's hear it for our, our police department. They do such a great job. Let's hear it for them. Yes. I promise I am not going to make you come up front and do a video. Thank you, Mayor. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the Chamber and the Mayor for inviting me to come up here and speak about my amazing police department that I have been a member of this family for going on third three decades. So, um, not bad considering I'm only, only 39 years old. <laughs> so, I'm trying to see what screens are up. You can go one more. So I could sit up here and talk to you guys about all these numbers that are up on the screen. There's a couple, or there's multiple uh, ballot initiatives that are getting ready to come up on this year's ballot. Obviously, there's only one that really um, I can talk to you about. All these numbers are here. You guys can all see them. But the ones that are important to you as a community who invest in this city are what do we have on our department right now? Not the ones that are on this screen that may be leaving, not the ones that have went and done ride-alongs with KCPD because of their raises. The ones that I can talk about and want to talk to you about today are the vacancies that we currently have on our department. Those are the ones that affect you, the community, the businesses, the business leaders. The first one I want to talk about is patrol. They have five vacancies currently in patrol. Part of the reason that doesn't sound so much those are the people that are out there with you every day. Those are the ones you see driving on the road. Those are the ones that answer calls for service. And for me and the command staff within our department, that is the biggest priority for this city is to keep that as fully functional as we can. Because those are the ones, again, that directly affect you. So we have five vacancies there. General investigations, we have six vacancies. We have two different levels of investigations. The general one is your property crimes sex crimes, um, uh, auto theft, all the different ones that have to be investigated. We have six vacancies there. Your special investigations, those are your drug units, street crimes, any of the kind of outside of the box uh, violent crime initiatives. We are down eight in that unit. Special operations. Those are the ones that you guys may see quite a bit. You've got your SWAT team, which obviously you guys don't see those very often, but the majority of our vacancies in that division are community services, our com community engagement unit. That in 
encompasses the Independence Center. It encompasses Hawthorne. It encompasses Inglewood Business District. All of it encompasses our homeless initiatives. Again, I have 12 vacancies in that division. So think about that unit that I just gave you. That's 12 vacancies. We have 20 unassigned positions that were opened up with the amendment to Prop P. Those positions have yet to be assigned because we can't get them filled at this point. So those are still unassigned. On a positive note, we have seven people currently or getting ready to start the academy at KCPD. We have seven currently in our FTO program, which is field training officer program, so they're currently um, in the process of getting ready to be released on the street. Of those, another positive note, today at three o'clock, we have our first commissioning ceremony um, since the onset of all the negotiations and everything else with the new pay raises, we have our first commissioning for those officers that have started under that plan today at three o'clock and there are five. All of them are already certified, came from other agencies. One of them is a returning member to our department. Um, he missed the family. This is truly a family atmosphere on this department. Anybody who's been around us and been around this place and been around me at all knows that that is very important for me, for this department to be a family. I have all sorts of notes written up here, and I, don't, I always go off of them because I get on a tangent. This department means the world to me. This community means the world to me. As many of you know, I was not born here in Independence, but this is home. This has been home for almost three decades. Oh, we can keep going on those slides. <laughs> um, people ask me every day the differences in all the different taxes and all of that. You guys, you guys have all seen that in all the flyers and pamphlets and brochures that are coming out. Um, just remember, this stuff all affects you. Make sure you get out and vote. Just make sure you get out and vote. That's all I've got. I'm way quick. So everybody have a safe and blessed day. On the next one, we're going to talk about the charter. And, and just a couple of things here about the charter. We wanted to use pictures just to illustrate the last time the charter was actually written, or when the charter was originally written. That's when John Kennedy was president of the United States. The charter was revised when Michael Jordan was a rookie for the Chicago Bulls. It's time to do that. It's time to update it. And there's a couple of things that it does, okay? It takes the charter from 60 pages down to 30 pages. People are always saying government should be more efficient, more effective, and more precise. And that's what the Charter Commission did. They did a great job on that. It mandates the charters renewed every seven years, and that is so important. It brings our charter in compliance with Missouri state law. And it also requires city departments to engage the public actively. It removes provisions for business license because that's already in our code. It removes, well, let me ask you this. It removes, uh, how many pages does it remove of city department descriptions? Does anybody know? Just give me a number. 30. Well, that's great, but smaller than that. 15, higher than that. Smaller than 20. 19, we'll just go with that one. 19 pages describe departments. We don't need that. That is, what, that is one of the big reasons it's being brought down because we can describe the departments in the city codes. We don't have to have all of that. So that's so important to make us make it simpler and easier. And then also one other example it, it does is it removes the 1961 examples of ballots. We don't have to do that anymore uh, to have the example of the ballot on there. The next thing I want to talk about is the geo bond. And there's so much need for our city for this. We've got folks who want more improved and better streets. The city has about 1,200 miles of streets and it's very difficult to stay current with all of that. About 25% of our roads are in good condition, grade B or better. 
But we've got 250 miles of roads that are, which is 20% of our roads that are actually graded bad. And so we would take money from that, roughly $60 million, in order to improve your roads and your streets. We've got situations where we've got bridges that are closed. Kentucky Avenue Bridge is one example. We need to get those working again. We've got some bridges and culverts that are closed. We've got four bridges that are currently closed, and that will be $15 million for repair to replace those or repair or replace all 14 bridges and culverts within the city. There's also money set aside for curbs and sidewalks. And I know this, the school district has had such a challenge with getting bus drivers. So you've had to change your rules there of how, people, how, many, how close they can be to, the, to their school to get there. We want to put sidewalks next to those schools to make it safer for children to walk to school. So that's what we're doing there with regards to curbs and sidewalks. We also need the Vail Mansion and Bingham Wagner need tremendous upkeep. The, the Model Railroad Museum also needs that. I was there with the folks at Bingham Wagner last Saturday, and they had had some work started, but then it stopped and the contractor and all of that. And anyway, they're have, in the barn there on the property, it's leaking. It needs a tremendous amount of improvement. And so the bond issue would allow us to upgrade the Vail Mansion, the Bingham Wagner, and the Railroad Museum in order to make them current or at least improve them. And there's roughly 20 million, or excuse me, $10 million for our historic sites. Also, how many people think that we need some upgrades on our parks? Raise your hand. We need more hands than that. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, redoing the trails, updating the playgrounds, revitalizing the Independence Athletic Community Center at George Owen Park. And we would also, and one of the big things we would like there is also a new community center. And I think one of the keys to this is, as a council, we've been talking about the importance of sports tourism for our city. Because if we had a recreation center with multiple courts that we could have tournaments for pickleball or for volleyball or for basketball, that would bring a, a tremendous amount of, of families to our area to compete at that venue, and it could make a huge impact to an influx of folks to our city. And I think that's a really, really important key. So those are some of the things that we're working on with this process, and it's so critical that you all help us with that process. And so, Yvonne, where are you at? I know you're gonna wrap it up, right? Yvonne, come up here, because I have one last ask for you, because as the chair, you represent the chamber. And so I'm going to give you this hammer so that you can be one of those advocates to help us continue to build this city in a positive direction. So I just want to say thank you all very much, and please help Yvonne make this happen. Thank you.